Extending Tide DLC is the newest ESO DLC releasing very soon for PC, Mac, Stadia, and consoles. This is the first DLC for ESO in 2022, and it is bringing some massive changes to the base game with Update 33. Today in this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know or the things that you do not want to miss from this patch. Thank you again to all my patrons. I really do appreciate the support. More on that at the end of the video. So when can you expect this DLC or patch to go live? Well, for PC, Mac, Stadia, it will be live on Monday, March 14th. And for Xbox and PlayStation consoles, it will be live on March 29th. So then who has access to this DLC patch? Well, the way ESO does the current content release is every single DLC or expansion drop, there is a base game patch that goes live as well with it. These base game patches usually have significant changes or different nerfs or different, you know, buffs to certain things. And so it's important to differentiate which one is which. So in order to access the Ascending Tide DLC, not the base game patch, but the Ascending Tide DLC, you will either need to have ESO Plus or you can outright buy it for 1500 crowns. If you have ESO Plus, it will automatically be included for you and you'll be able to access some of the new content involved. But hey, if you don't have ESO Plus or you don't wanna buy the DLC, don't fret. There is massive changes coming with Update 33 for the base game. This is the other side of the update that I was talking about. Update 33 will be live on those specified dates as well and be live for all players. So you won't be missing out on a lot of the major things going on in ESO because a lot of it is in the base game patch. But what do each of these updates entail and what are they bringing because they are very different. The Ascending Tide DLC is a dungeon DLC game pack. This will allow you to participate in the two new dungeons coming with that DLC. Those dungeons are the Coral Airy and Shipwright's Regret. These dungeons will bring three brand new item sets in each dungeon along with a monster set. I personally haven't tested these sets yet and haven't done these dungeons yet because I'd like to do them blind on the release day and keep it a surprise. If you want to watch me run these dungeons live, I will be streaming on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash probably got this. I usually stream Tuesday through Friday, but I will be streaming that Monday for the dungeon. So come out and check out the stream. I usually stream during the day and at night. So just go over there and follow and you can figure out when I'm live. But ESO's DLC dungeons are usually really Really, really good and you can expect a full review from me when I do these next week. But along with these dungeons, you can earn a few cosmetics and achievements with them too. But the gist in the main meat of this update is update 33. So let's get into what you don't want to miss with this. The first massive change coming in the base game patch is account wide achievements. This has been a highly requested feature or update from the community for a long time. Essentially what this does is any achievement, barring a few other achievements that they have noted on the patch notes, you will be able to have account wide. So what that means is, is if you look here at the achievement tab, uh, we'll go over here and you go to achievements. Right now, all these achievements are just from this character that I'm on right now. This is my main character, right? I play on this person the most. These are just from this character. So on the on here, I've almost gotten about half of the achievements in the game just on this character. But what it's not putting into account is it's not putting into all the other nine, 10 characters that I've had on the game, all their achievements. So if you go to a dungeon and you do the hard mode of a dungeon on one character, but you don't do it on the other, what it's gonna start doing, it's gonna start counting those achievements on your whole account as a whole. This is really nice because that means you're gonna share titles. That means that uh, if you wanna do a dungeon uh, trifecta achievement, which usually gives you really good skins or something like that, you can do them on specific characters and then it will all collectively count on your account. This is also gonna bring better performance because it's gonna apparently help uh, like load times and all that stuff. It talked about that in the article, so that's just what they said, like what Zoss said, uh, but I'm excited that it's actually gonna hopefully help that a little bit, but I'm just excited for this because again, there's a few achievements in this game that I've done on other characters that don't even count, and it's like, man, I wish they counted, but now they're going to. So what's gonna do is you just need to log on to all your characters so it can uh, see all your achievements, and then it should pull all the achievements together. The next massive change that you should know of and you don't wanna miss is how they've reworked the Undaunted Reputation. If you don't know what Undaunted Reputation is, it is basically the Undaunted Guild and it is the dungeon skill line, you could say. This skill line is one of the most important skill lines in my opinion for a lot of builds because it's got a lot of skills in this skill line and passives that are really, really useful. And the skill line goes to 10, right? But before, it was a little bit different ranking it up. Like it just felt like kind of clunky in my opinion. 
but since they're doing account-wide achievements, they had to rework this a little bit, but I actually really like a lot of the new uh, stuff that they're doing for it, and I'm going to cover it here. On the patch notes, uh, the current ones, that I've seen, uh, here's the table of like what they're changing about it. So you'll see that the current live one, they have all the totals, the daily delve achievements, dungeon quest, pledge, pledge vet, pledge vet, hard mode, trial quest, and trial quest vet. What they're doing is, and the changes that's current right now in the patch, uh, in the PTS, the daily delve still gonna give you 10 points. The achievements aren't gonna give you anything now because they're gonna be account wide. Dungeon quests are now going to give you 25. Pledge, normal pledges are now gonna give you 25. Vet pledges are now gonna give you 50, and vet hard mode pledges are gonna give you 100 reputation, which is insane. Trial quests are gonna give you 50, trial quests vets are gonna give you 100. In my opinion, this is massive, especially that vet hard mode, because you could just do your vet hard mode pledges and get so much reputation each day on each character, and it's so like helpful. So I'm really happy to see this change because I really think it's gonna help people actually level Undaunted, um, which is just really, really nice. Next, another cool thing that's coming with the base game is something for PVPers. Three new item sets are coming with this patch that you can obtain in the rewards of the worthy boxes. The other thing that you can get that's really cool that I hope they start doing for PVE players is a new like style that you can earn called Dragon Guard Berserker. Okay, so what this is is essentially um, it is a like motif or an outfit set that you can earn um, by doing PvP. So the Dragon Guard Berserker, it says on the article here, you can acquire style pages for this new look by reaching Alliance PvP rank 20 and trading in your Telvar stones to the Telvar merchants located in the Imperial City sewers. This Berserker style will be bound to your character, so the only way to acquire this impressive armor is to earn it through battle, which is cool because you can't sell it or anything like that. So when people see it, they're like, man, you actually earned that. I do wish ESO would start doing more of this for different content because I think it would just add more value to some of the things that you earn in the game, especially mounts certain motifs, stuff like that. The next massive change that's going to shift ESO's builds a lot, in my opinion, uh, and really just for the future, is um, what they've been doing with hybridization. They've been making the game more hybrid friendly. They've been really doing this over the last year, and they've just made another massive step to increasing it to make it more hybrid friendly. So I'm really just interested to see how ESO is in the next like year because they keep you know changing this, right? And so what they essentially did with skills is so any skill that you see like expert hunter which goes into like camouflage hunter it says while slaughter you gain major savagery increasing your weapon critical rating every skill that has that now is now going to have like major prophecy or major you know whatever the opposite of major savagery is so major savagery is more for stamina characters because it's you know weapon critical right so then it's going to have the opposite one which is going to help spell critical as well so basically every skill that um, they noted in the patch notes is going to have the same effect for weapon you know damage or spell damage right it's kind of insane because now things that you could stack on your bar could be even higher and it just gives you more uh, ability to go into hybrid um, ideas with your builds. So just keep an eye on that for some of the skills that you're using because you're going to be like, wow, I didn't think I was getting spell damage before, but now I'm getting spell damage and weapon damage. So it just makes things a lot more open to hybridization, which is kind of crazy that they're going down that route. And then another big thing I want to mention when it comes to some skills and classes is the DK, in my opinion, is getting a massive buff. So Burning Embers right now doesn't actually heal you immediately. Um, it heals you for 75% of the total damage inflicted when the effect ends. But in the next update for the base game, this is going to heal you for 100% of the total damage inflicted, and it's going to heal you immediately, not when the effect ends. This is a massive thing for DKs. They're, they're, they've been helping DKs out a lot, I feel like, in the last couple patches. So I'm really excited about this. And so I'd like to hear what you're excited about with this patch down in the comments below as well because there are a lot of changes here and a lot of big things coming in the base game that you really do not want to miss. But what you can do as well is if you want to check out any builds that are updated for this patch or any guides uh, relevant to this patch, I'll have them up here in the cards here that you can watch and that can help you uh, be even more prepared for this patch in the future coming up. But I do appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, heavy attack that bell icon to stay up to date on all the content in the channel. And until next time, y'all just remember to have faith, be great, and I'll see you on ESO.